Hi, I'm back in the studio. Welcome to my channel. I'm Shirley Peters and I'm going to be painting a watercolour today of this scene, which is um, near Chemonix in France. My daughter's just come back from there. That's, I think she took the photo. She's not in the scene, but uh, I couldn't resist that. I thought that would be a beautiful painting. Fairly simple, but it could be, it could be a little bit difficult. I'm not sure. I'll let you know <laughs> as I mess up. But I'm going to use these watercolours. I have a link above. I'll put a link above to show you how I establish this little palette. I have to mention the coronavirus. It's terrible. Um, if anyone's got it, you have my sympathy. You might be at home isolated because you're in that withholding period, um, in which case you might want to do a painting. <laughs> That'd be fun. And um, I hope you get better soon if you're not well. Just to let you know, I'm using Archer's Rough and it's very forgiving. It's pretty easy to use. It's very expensive, I hate to say. And uh, if you've only got cheaper watercolour paper, don't worry, do, use it. And uh, I, I've done many videos on the cheaper paper and they, uh, you can still get a lovely painting. When I do this type of watercolour, there's going to be a fair bit, very pale washes of this light blue colour. So um, I don't want to draw too heavily. It will put it this way, where I draw is where it's going to be. The marks are going to be in the end. You won't be able to hide your pencil marks. So I'm just going to draw this line down here. A few lumps and bumps. Come straight down to that ridge going across the back there. Put that in. The, the um, top of the mountains I'll put in. What do you call that? Profile, I guess. And the shadowy areas on those two ridges. I'll define those. Okay, so I've virtually stopped it about there for myself. You, you might find you can do it a little bit different. So I'm going to bring that, I'm going to put that character there, um, about there. Mark a little point Then I've got another line coming down like that and I'm going to bring that ridge where their skis were right round to the front. Doesn't join up, skip a bit now that I see her figure, move her up and then go from behind that basically across in a sort of a random way. More skiing tracks below. They're like little, at the front they're double lines but towards the back they disappear into one line. And there's some more like someone's had a lot of fun down here traversing down the hill. The lines are actually the star of the show <laughs> and in this valley here they've done some lot of skiing coming down there by the looks of it. Anyway that's not important. What is important is these shadowy parts that come off the mountain. Blue shadows at this stage. So I can see what I'm doing <laughs> and I bet no one else can. Okay, that's enough. Um, my figures might need to be a little bit more defined. I have heard people, I was watching some someone, hello, whoever you are, I can't remember now, on a video saying to draw little carrots for people. I think that's not a bad concept to have in mind these shadows coming down the hill they might be there too so bigger bigger at the area down here closer to where we are and then oh, how many have I got one two three four one two three yep I've moved them around a little bit I've got this person here I'm going to put two there because I made a little mistake I should have moved him up so two's fine Oh yes, there's all sorts of other marks in the snow here, which is there. Obviously they're stocks. So we'll, we'll put that in later. 
Okay, first it's going to be the sky for me. And just to make it easy, I'm going to turn the page upside down. And when I do that, I do that too. And I'm using a beautiful mop, large mop, Escoda. Not all that necessary. Could if you wanted to use it cheaper. Use one of these flat ones that I've used a lot in my plain air work, but for the moment I'm just spoiling myself. Oh, now that's it. I'm just going to clean clean these little wells up from my previous painting. It's if I was doing a city scene, I'd love to have these as they are, but because it's this is a pristine snow painting, I would rather have a clean start so that my colours are not too um, what's the word? contaminated. <laughs> One thing about my videos, I, I get lost for words, but then I've done that all my life. I don't know that it's an old age thing. So I'm just mopping up these old these other colours. Before I start putting water on here and adding the blue colour, I'm just going to mix it. It's a very strong A very strong blue. I'm going to use ultramarine blue. It's almost in the photograph it's very 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 dark. So just keep adding to it. I'm trying to think of what colour I should add to make it that dark. See, my blue is very light. I'm going to throw a bit of purple in there. I do this a lot. I, I end up painting all the way around the edge of the of my print. Okay, that'll do. So just for the fun of it, no, you know, when I say that, I mean no preparation. Just going to put the paint straight into the shape that I had drawn. I'm not going to think twice about it. I'm just going to enjoy the process. And you can see how much paint there is on my brush. It's really thick and easy to use. And this is where the good art materials can be your rescue, can be your saviour. Now I'll just push back into that. I'm pressing hard. I'm dry. It's dry paper. I haven't wet it. This is taking that colour full on. And I'll make it. I'll make it stronger and darker at the top. It is just such a strong dark sky. So I've gone right across. Now in the photograph here, there's a cloud bank coming up over here. So the way I deal with that is I'll wash my brush and just go back in there with a bit of water, no water preferably. I'll dry it off. I just want to take, lift out some of that colour. This brush is going all weird on me. Of course you can always use, um, I'll take some of this paper off. You can use tissues for this type of thing, lifting out. A lot of people do that. I'm just going to dab it because I don't want it to be hard edged. So I'm just going to use the dabbing technique there. Take it right down onto the snow edge because the clouds obviously coming right up behind that ridge. Go right over. Okay. While I'm here with this paper, just suck up, use the paper to absorb the very edge. There's always a pool of water or colour along the very edge. Just taking that up into the paper so it doesn't, when I turn it around the other way, like that, I don't want to see that wet edge running back down into the sky. 
next roll. I'm going to leave that white, not touch that top edge for the time being. I do like a nice crispy edge. What I'll do is get the um, decide on a colour for the shadows. You have to be careful that the photograph you've taken and the printer you've used has not made the whites. In this case, they're very blue. Um, they might not be that blue in real life. It's just one of those things, the setting of the camera. I'm just going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to take a purple and I'm going to do some of these very pale um, hills and valley colours with a purple wash. For example, over here, I won't go, I won't touch the sky, but I'll just come in a little way from there. Wet the brush up a bit more. I'm going to start adding some of the valleys. That scratching you hear is my 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 um, little pinky on on the paper. So I'm just going to. And if you can see, I'm actually pressing hard and getting a little bit more of that purple to come out. I need to add a fair bit of water to this type of hills and valley painting so that I don't get sharp edges. Darkish in there. I'm adding more water now and coming to doing the same blue but paler. So basically very watery. I think I can go all over this. I can't see any reason why I shouldn't. As I get down into this valley, it just gets it's paler as it's coming towards me. Except of course for this division. So I'll put a bit of colour in there. Now that I've come up over the hill, I'm going to go a bit stronger. push that colour around. This is very wet. I don't know if you can tell. Okay, so soak off the water off the brush, come back in, pick it up. I'm going to wet that again. Smooth that out. That should just run down. This one, I'll absorb that water there. Just bring that down to the edge. That's going to end up being white in there and I'll probably go over it with a bit of my gouache. I've got a little bit of something on my, I hate to think it's a little bit of paper that's rolled off because that's the sort of thing that doesn't happen on good quality paper. Okay, so while it's wet, I'm just going to add some more interesting um, areas of purple. Oh, not purple. I want purple. I'll take it up there. It's all going to nicely blend. Put some back there. I'm going to blend this in. Quite dark up the top there under the shade of that mountain. Might run those up to that. Yep. Okay, that's fun. Of course I, I don't want to see any ridges. I'm constantly wetting it and running over it to smooth it out. I want the shapes, but that's all. Okay. Right. 
bit of bloom happening here. Might just, while I'm waiting for it to dry, just get another brush. Make sure it's a clean brush. What type of brush will I use? Mm. a dry brush this is actually just drying it off and I shall absorb a little bit with that by dragging this dry brush over the top make sure it stays dry because it'll absorb water just adding some subtleties in the hills and valleys. I'm not necessarily closely watching what's happening over here. I'm just playing around a little bit. Absorb this water down the bottom into that dry brush. I shall. Drag across that area that makes it look like a hill. Okay. Taking a really big hake, hake, and drag that up. See if I can get smooth, smooth texture into that area happy with that that's good so I'll let that dry and then I can come back with some more layers over the top specifically the shadows and of course the ridges where the, the figures are So let's have a look at the reference. What I'd like to do now is, well, I was talking before about that, that shadow. I'm just going to trial it to see what it looks like. So mm -hmm. I think I might like it a bit, a bit stronger, not so watery. And there, I'm not happy with that colour. I'm just going to. This is the, the colour I'm talking about. So if I do it up here, I can get an idea. Get a little bit more purple in it now that I'm looking at it. Not that much purple. So I'll keep mix, mix, mixing these blues till I'm happy with the colour. I'm actually going to touch a little bit of brown into it. Just need to knock it back so it's not so pretty and bright. I want it to be a dull blue. Oh, that's almost a black, but I tell you what, that's probably the colour I'm after. So, make sure you've got a nice point on the brush and then just paint it in as you see it. I'm just doing a couple of strokes not fiddling. Less is more in one of these sort of situations. So I'm going to go right up the top here, half close my eyes, see where all the dark areas are and go for it. And they curl, they kind of curl up with little, little circle, half circles. Gives you that shape. Come down, refill my brush. Now, where am I? kind of, I've made up a sort of a fantasy area here, but I'll follow my pencil line because that at least hides the pencil line later on. You don't have to worry about it being on show. Sometimes it's hard to have pencil lines that you haven't used and it does look like a mistake then. Over the top at the back here, I think I'll water, I'll water my colour down a little bit to make it not so strong. 
looks strong there, but I think it'll fade. So just make up a couple of spots there. On this side, not so many. So I'm going to wet my brush and the top half of those, I'm just going to fade them out a little bit so they're not so sharp because they're on a, on a rounded surface. They're not giving a sharp edge, not like the, the shadow that's lying below. And up here in the corner, there's a sh an interesting shadow that I, I, sometimes I wouldn't put that in, but in this case, there's not a lot of detail in this picture, in this, in this photograph, so I'm, I, I am looking for subject matter. So a mysterious shadow like that just adds interest. A traditionalist would say don't put it in, but I tend to do exactly as I see, which is not the traditional way. Traditional way is to make it up, half make it up. We improve on nature. Now, just putting little spots here and there at the back there, make them look like rocks. And up on this ridge, a bit of detail because it's looking a bit white. When this all dries, I think we'll be, we will have a chance to come back over some of these hills and add a little bit of tint on that side. But as it is, I've just got that neutral grey. It was blue before, and then I added a little bit of brown to it, so it ends up being a nice neutral grey. Where am I? Okay. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm I'm not at all following this. Very very loosely following. I'm now doing this section here, and as you can see, it doesn't match with what's underneath, so that's all right. Now there comes a time when you stop, and you go, okay, what's next? Maybe some little parts like that. I'm going to be drawing these lines in. They're very, very, very thin. So I'm going to go to a rigger brush. You can use, you can keep using just a normal fine watercolour brush. If you buy a set, you will be given. Hmm, let's see what's the finest one I've got. They all seem to have rounded ends, but that's it. Of course, I, my favourite is, of course, my rigger, a rigger. There'll be a link down below if you want to buy yourself a rigger. But it's, it's like a long, thin, this one's got bits of old paint in it. It's a very long, thin brush. And I'm going to just trial something at the moment. I'm just going to put some water, water down on one of these pencil lines very carefully run that down and I'll get that neutral grey I just had and touch it in. That might help me fill that area. Hmm. I think I might go a bit brighter blue. It actually runs all the way over there and there's a whole lot of stuff happening over there so slightly brighter blue. I'm just going to, what I'm going to do now is follow the pencil lines I did. I'm not going to follow the photograph. I really do want these pencil lines to be covered up with paint. And sometimes, the fact you made a choice at one stage to put a pencil line in that direction, that's a good enough guide for you to follow it. Trust your previous decision. Okay, so this one here, I remember I separated up into two separate runs, lines. Just adds interest. So this is the main one where the people we are following, using the high, the high run, the high rail. Follow a few more of these pencil lines. Okay, I'm going to need to go a bit darker. I just, when I stand back and look, they're very pale. I want to make them much stronger. But each one has a white edge on that side. 
and a very dark top edge. So I'll ignore the white at this stage, but I'm going to assume I'm going to come back with some white gouache. So I'm just adding a bit of stronger blue and brown to my brush just to give a bit more oomph. I don't want them too wishy-washy, I want them strong. Not fat, just strong. And they go right around that hill, so I'm going to have to draw them up into that area. I'll do a, a few vertical lines there, or a few directional lines. Not vertical. Up the hill, but they're, di they're still diagonal. Okay, I'm going dark on this one. Right round. And they do get wonky in themselves, so they're not a smooth subject to paint. There's human error in them because people are just skiing across. Okay. Hmm. A couple of extra lines there that I might put in. Now that I'm not following my pencil line, I feel more free. So that's something to think about when you draw it up. If I did it again, I probably wouldn't bother putting the pencil line in. So it gives you more freedom to do that, just the flow. Right. Go back to a small mop. I'm going to put those little figures in. Very important to get the size right at this stage. Tiny little triangle. Well, not even a triangle, just a little um, uh, blob. This one up here, the closer, I'm just going to add a little bit more detail to these two figures because I'm still doing them basically blue. That's the shadow, but I will add a red pair of red trousers to one of these. You've got a shadow, each one has its own shadow, so that's fun, just put that down. Sometimes the legs are separated in the shadow that you can't tell in the above them. Looking at the figure itself, they look like single-legged people, but the shadow itself separates out. I'll just go to a dark, very dark colour here for the base of this guy. This is where fiddling around doesn't work. There's nowhere in this painting you can actually fiddle. It's all got, just do it. There's the orange pants on that chap. He's actually further down, but I've moved him up there. I just put a bit of colour in one or two or the other. Not the one right from the distance, because it's too far away for you to tell what colour they're, they're wearing. Now, I've got a bit of fun and games here in this close-up uh, ridge where they've walked through so much as what colour. I have to think of a colour that might work there. This is the, the challenge of doing white snow. <laughs> it's always going to be. Right, so I'm doing purple and brown to make a neutral grey. I'm going to do that upper ridge that's in the shadow quite strong. ridge beside it has got hot, lots of little uh, ups, rigid, find the right words, little zigzaggy shapes, all I can say. <laughs> Let's see, what I, see the picture. It's about right. Hmm. There are lots of footprints around, so I shall make that a little bit lighter and paler than my normal shadow colour because I just don't want to make them look like they're too deep. So I go for a pale blue. Uh, top half is the shadow, the bottom half is not. And they're all over the joints, so in the end they're just little dots. And they're also on the other side. And this is where I might come back with the gouache and add the gouache to them to make it look like they're a lump of snow. And if 
you're doing it realistically, you could stare very closely at that picture and try and see how they've done. They've got lines going between the two, which obviously the where they've dragged the point of their stock and then stabbed it into the uh, snow. So little loin, lines going from one circle to the next. Probably on the other side, not as obvious. That whole ridge there has to be white, so that'll be a perfect spot for me to come back and add um, gouache. At the moment I'm going to go up to the top here and put a little bit of texture into these mountain tops with the paler, paler blue. Just on the left side, on the shadow side, little spots here and there. Add a little bit more detail to those ridges. Now, coming down to my browns, let me see, what have I got? I'm going to try and mix a very dark ultramarine blue and burnt umber for these big rocks that are exposed. In this case, there's one there. It's very dark. This is going to give a bit of sparkle to the white uh, paint some up there. So every now and then the rock is exposed. It just goes to show the snow wasn't that deep. Not at the top. Only in the valley, in the uh, ridges. So just... This is an opportunity for you to hide any pencil marks that you think don't need to be there. Up here there's a big area of rock. And up into there. A little bit there. Okay. Now might just darken the, while well, I've got this dark colour, the bottom side of those two figures. Mm. I'm not, I haven't got their um, poles in because I just think it's a tiny bit too much detail that we wouldn't see when you just glance at a painting like this. I've got this. I'm not happy about the pencil line there. I'm just not feeling I shouldn't have put that in. So this is sometimes where I often go back and redo a painting like this, making the, especially with watercolour. Do it a couple of times and you'll, you'll find you'll fix errors. So basically that's about it for colour. <laughs> Thought I was finished, but I, I ain't. I've got my beautiful white gouache, which you wouldn't think on a watercolour like this you'd need it, but oh, it's fantastic to play with gouache. It's a designer's gouache. When, you, when you're doing snow, it's, it's sort of adding texture. It is the snow texture itself. So I've still got dirty water there. I hope it's going to be all right because I'm nearly finished. So I'll add the water into the gouache make it creamy and then scrape it off. I'm hoping this brush is going to be pointy enough. In some ways to tell if you've got a pointy brush you know play with it on a piece of scrap paper. I don't think it is. And sometimes believe it or not I have to go to a larger brush to get a finer point. And I'm not exaggerating. I have got a second one a second Aquario from Joseph Zbukovic, who is a fantastic painter. I recommend you look him up. And I'm just going to see how pointy that one is compared to the smaller brushes I had. And just a very tip. And I'll just have a play here. Sometimes you can play on the actual painting itself. And you can see how much, how fat that is and how wrong that is that I've got it that fat. So I'll just see if I can 
play around with the end of the brush to get it thinner. I think I can. I'll start up here where I, I know I want white in this, in this heavy crevice close to the camera. Half of my problem here is covering up my heavy white, my heavy pencil. So think twice about too much pencil work before you start these watercolours. Don't always follow what I'm doing. <laughs> Watch it all the way through and then just see my mistakes and then you can save. Okay. Now, this is where I want to get rid of that pencil line. So I'm going to put white along that edge. Mm, I have to make it a bit runnier. I want it thick, but down here it's quite all right. See how there's lots of lines there from people having skied that little spot. But I'm just going to try and use the white to emphasize the curve of the hill and at the same time get rid of my pencil. Sometimes you can rub it out after, but you can't always be sure. I like to get it right now. So here's the paint. Now I'm going to just come in with water, spread it out a bit. Now the beautiful lushness of this beautiful and now while I'm here I'm just going to add the fat white marks to this snow that will be catching the sun I think the sun coming down this way so the sun's catching there and on this side not so obvious there because of the the, the background colours are still fairly light. Mm. Some interesting shapes in there, but I probably won't go there now. Sometimes I see a possibility, but it's not worth it. Mm. You have to choose your battles in these sort of paintings. So. Anywhere where I think the sun is catching, or I can see that the sun is catching, I'm putting a little white strip beside the path. And that will give that slightly three-dimensional look to it. It will look like the sun's catching the edge, the lumpy snow, as opposed to the smooth snow. So the reason you put the all over tint on first is so that you can come back in and make the, the edges lighter, whiter than white. Okay. Down here there's a couple of more paths that I might just put in with just a few little um, brush strokes and that's kind of like adding your adding a bit of artistic license to the scene. Okay. And back in there there's a lot of little uh, areas where they've, someone has, apart from where I put paint down, sometimes you have to be careful you don't look at your own marks and think there's something that you should be painting in. Makes you think, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to blob a little bit of white over the top of areas that I, where the pencil mark is still showing. And it saves me having to go over later and clean it all off. A few little strokes with this paint, run them up like that. Just adds texture, adds, adds sort of depth to that paint. Across the top here. Now, just got a little bit of 
pencil mark up there. It's going to join this mountain top up high, make it push it up higher so that it kind of joins into that clouded area. One other thing, I have to look carefully at those figures and see if any of them have a need for a little pale highlight on that side. And they don't, but I want to put it on anyway just to make them look a little bit touched by the sun. Okay. Little dots here and there. Amazing what you see when you look closely at what looks like a totally smooth hill. I can see little rocks, I guess you'd call them. And now I'll go in with the tiniest little pale blue and just add a little shadow under each one. Going back from the, normally I like to use the white right at the end so you've only got that last little bit of retouching with the white gouache but uh, then I go back in and change my mind about what colours I should have there and I end up with white going through the paint. I don't want that. Okay, one last job for my gouache under these figures. Just want to make sure that they are well and truly not being too, um, uh, what's the word? They've got a lot of pencil work around them. I just need to get rid of that. So if I was to do this again, bottom line, I can see it's a bit lighter on the pencil. Other than that, oh cool. Okay, I think that's it. Some white around that little one. Some of these can have little spots here and there. That'll be it. Very simple figures in the snow. I hope you like that. I like it. I hope you do. I'm pretty sure my link is on my website, shirleypeters000 at gmail.com. Send me your photo, send me a photo of your painting if, you've, if you do this one, <laughs> or any of them. I love to see it. I love to see them. Thank you, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, catch you in the next video, and uh, stay safe. <laughs>